I'm dynamite, I'm dynamite, I'm dynamite. 
kingdom is in you. The kingdom is in you. The power of God is in you. You're not going to release it. You're not going to release it. Tap into it. You're not going to release 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 it.
God truly God is in this place uh, and I'm really not trying to be before you long but I will be as long as God tells me to be before you and then if I wanted to leave a thought with you uh, the thought that God gave to me is the position and the purpose of power my God uh, you see for those of you that were actually participating uh, and involved in the service today uh, I want to let you know that your position has just shifted uh, your position has just moved uh, come on God has done something in your life amen that's because you know you're praising God for a reason uh, that's because you're praising God for a breakthrough uh, that's because you're praising God for a change in your life uh, you know I can't be like this always God uh, but God I'm going to submit myself uh, while I'm here but God I need you to change uh, my position uh, my God and God says I'm going to change uh, your position uh, if you stay with me uh, if you endure uh, if you submit uh, I'm going to change your position uh, and for some of us uh, that have been downtrodden uh, come on that have been oppressed uh, we know that it won't always be like this uh, but we know that joy is going to come in the morning uh, just like Joe said all the days of my life uh, I'm going to wait what my appointed time until my chains come God says your chains uh, you're shifting your position uh, is going to change uh, in the name of Jesus yes, uh, I believe and Jesus. hallelujah but he said the position uh, and the purpose of power my God my, my. my God yes, my. we get some people and you can see it all over in the churches uh, they don't really want to praise or get involved with praise and worship uh, my God they want to wait for the word to be preached uh, they want to wait for the final altar call but those of us that have a relationship with God we know that we don't have to wait uh, when we go ahead when we have a need God, God didn't say come later he always said come now right uh, he presented it but in the anyways uh, I want to come to you from 1 Corinthians chapter 29, verse 1. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We're going to talk about the position and the purpose of power. My God, God has given us positions, and God is going to give us positions, and God has given us power. My God. First Corinthians, excuse me, First Chronicles chapter 29 and verse 1. And then we're going to turn to 2 Chronicles 1 and 1 through 12. Amen. Amen. Chronicles. I said Corinthians, but I meant Chronicles. Amen. First Corinthians, excuse me, First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 1. And then 2 Chronicles chapter 1, 1 through 12. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Just say amen when you have it. Amen. amen. Come on, if your neighbor didn't say amen, help him out. All right. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, God, he's going to have his way through this way. Man, this is a rain of word. My God, so I got to blow with the Holy Ghost with this one. Thank you, Jesus. In 1 Corinthians chapter 29, verse 1, and it reads as this. Furthermore, David the king said unto the congregation, Solomon, my son, whom alone God has chosen, is yet young and tender, and the work is great. For the palace is not for man, but for the Lord. The Lord. Amen. I want y'all to get that in your spirit. Amen. For the palace is not for man, but it is for the Lord. Talking about your position. Amen. And now we're just going to read a little bit of background foundation. Second Corinthians, excuse me, Second Chronicles, chapter 1, verses 1 through 12. Thank you, Jesus. Enlarge this just a little bit. Second Chronicles chapter 1, verses 1 through 12. And Solomon, the son of David, was strengthened in his kingdom, and the Lord his God was with him, and magnified him exceedingly. Then Solomon spake unto all Israel, to the captains of thousands and of hundreds, and to the judges, and to every governor in Israel, and the chief of the fathers. So Solomon and all the congregation with him went to the high place that was at Gibeon, for there was a tabernacle of the congregation of God, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, had made in the wilderness. But the ark of God had, had David brought up from Kirchim to the place where David had prepared for it, for he had pitched a tent for it at Jerusalem. Thank you, Jim. Moreover, the brazen altar that Brazil 
the son of Uri, the son of Hur, had made, he put before the tabernacle of the Lord, and Solomon and the congregation sought unto it. And Solomon went up thither to the brazen altar before the Lord, which was at the tabernacle of the congregation. And he offered a thousand burnt offerings upon it. In the night did God appear unto Solomon <clears throat> and said unto him, Ask what I shall give thee. Yes. And Solomon said unto God, Thou hast shown great mercy unto David my father and has made me to reign in his stead. Now, O Lord God, let thy promise unto David my father be established. For thou hast made me king over a people like the dust of the earth in multitude. Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I might go out and come in before the people. For who can judge this thy people? That is so great. And God said unto Solomon, because this was in thy heart, and thou hast not asked riches, wealth, our honor, nor the life of thine enemies, neither yet hast asked long life, but hast asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself, that thou mayest judge my people, over whom I have made thee king. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee. And I will give thee riches and wealth and honor, such as none of the kings have had before, uh, before thee, neither shall there any after thee have, uh, uh, excuse me, have have the light. Amen. So there will be none like before him nor after him. Amen. And just as a reminder, it's the position and the purpose of power. Yeah. Amen. And as I already stated earlier, amen, God said that our position has changed. Somebody's position has changed. It might not be for me, but it's for somebody. Your yeah. position has changed. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Going back to First Chronicles chapter 29 and verse 1, we see this is where Solomon is being instituted as the king. And we know that Solomon was a child, like eight years old, seven, probably even five years old, as a child as God made him king. And there's more to it as follows. Amen. But David was here giving his last direction and his last advice as Solomon began to take and reign in the, with the crown. He says, Solomon, my son, whom alone God has chosen, this is who God has chosen. Yeah. Not anybody else. You know the story of Solomon? You know somebody else tried to take the crown away from Solomon. But God said, not so. I have chosen Solomon for the seed of David. Amen. And David was given instruction unto Solomon, which is why we can see and we can read Psalms and bleed over into Proverbs. And we can see Ecclesiastes where it seems like it's the same person uh, reading it, but it's David and his son Solomon that have given the uh, proper credit for uh, writing those books. Amen. Somebody say, like father, like son. Like father, like son. Amen. But he is yet young and tender, and the work is great. And we know that David was leaving behind the work for Solomon to finish. Amen. If you have a child, amen, you know that you're probably going to want to leave over a business. You want to leave over some heirlooms or something like that. Something for them to have for, for further uh, uh, generations, correct? Come on, you think about the succession of kingdoms that always want to have a son, an heir, to give things over. Think about the kingdom of God. God has things that he wants to give over to you, and he's giving you a position, amen, so that way you can honestly and effectively rule in that position, amen. But Solomon has had this one issue. He was young and he was tender. Yeah. I would not rule a little individual, amen, or somebody who's eight years old, nine years old, even over my own house. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. Right. I'm going to leave this for somebody to have access to my cars, to have access to my firearms, to have access to my computers, to have access to the kitchen, to the stove, to the refrigerator. Come on, you know you leave your you you leave your belongings to somebody who is immature of that position, of that authority, amen, of that power, then you're liable to see your bills go up, you're liable to see your appliances broken, you're liable to see mayhem and destruction when you left the imperfect peace. Amen. But we looked at some of the positions that people have gathered, whether you be a president, whether you be a king, whether you be a pastor, whether you be an apostle, amen. Some of them have not been got the keys from God, but when God comes back up, he's going to see that it's a total wreck, and he's going to let his sheep, his kingdom astray, amen. And there's more to come. But Solomon had this issue. He was still yet young, and he was tender. What does young and tender mean? Young and 
and tender means it means from infancy to adolescence. So Solomon was an adolescent as he took the kingdom. Amen. And, and not just that, but also means by a servant. Amen. Notice when Solomon asked uh, God for wisdom, he came as a servant. He didn't demand money. He didn't demand wealth. He didn't even demand the wisdom and the knowledge. He said, God, I need this in order that I might be able to rule. See, he was coming from a servant, from a child's perspective. Amen. And then not just that, but tender, it means that he was weak. He was weak. At that point in his life, he was a weak ruler in a position. But yet God had promised him that position. Yes. God had promised him and made sure that he would get that position. Oh, yes. But yet he was still weak and he was still young and he was tender in that position. I'm talking about the position and the purpose of power. My God. So when you go further on and you read in First Chronicles uh, chapter 29 and verse 1, it says David was given the final instruction. He says, well, the work is great. He has to go build a temple. He has to make the uh, temple, amen, as God has instructed David that Solomon would do but he said the palace is not for man but for the Lord. I want to remind you just as God reminded me he said the palace, your position is not for you. Where you're at on your job it is not for you. Where you're at in life it is not for you. Where you're at in your house guess what God is saying it is not for you. But he says I have uh, amen, sanctified it and I have ordained that place for himself. That is for the Lord. Amen. So don't get the big head thinking that you're doing something. Don't get filled with pride thinking that you're in the right place at the right time and you've done it all by yourself. But God said that palace, that house, that job, that position, it is not for you but it is for myself. God said I will not give any man in my glory. I will not give any man in my shine. Flesh shall not have his ray or ray in my place but I will use Right? But people, this is what they want. They want 
these accolades. They, they, they want these certain conveniences in their life. Uh, amen. But they haven't even put forth the knowledge uh, for that position. Uh, how can you work a position and you don't have the knowledge for it? Uh, come on, we've seen people who have been put in positions and they didn't have the knowledge for it, right? Uh, we saw that the organization suffered. Uh, come on, we saw that people's lives would change our targets. Uh, come on, we saw that things, they, they just didn't go right, amen. Companies, they would plummet. Come on, you got people that's in your household. If you leave them in charge, you know that your household is going to plummet. It's going to be a torrential wreck, amen. And that's because they don't have any experience with how to deal with children. They don't have any experience with how to maintain a house, uh, how to keep the AC going. Uh, they don't have any experience on how to touch a paint, uh, how to cut grass and things of that nature. But God says, I'm trying to give people the knowledge and also the experience so that way they can be validated, amen. So God continues to think that people want the position but not the knowledge. Uh, people do not want to study to show themselves approved unto God, uh, but they want that position though. Yeah. Come on, and that's in church, uh, or that's wherever you're at. They want that position, but they don't want to study. They don't want to go to college. They don't want to go do the coursework. Uh, come on, they don't want to study themselves unproved unto God. They don't want to read the word. Uh, they don't want to see what every single word means uh, in the coordinates. Come on. They want to just go ahead and take and regurgitate and, and be a parent for what another preacher has said and get the accolades and just fake it, amen, like they got the knowledge. Uh, my God, but there's a lot of people that you see, they fake like they have the knowledge, uh, but it's as soon as you test them, as soon as you try them, you see that they can't even read on a third grade level. You see they don't even got the intelligence. They can't even spell the way out of a wet paper bag. But yet and still, these are the greatest peacocks. These are the greatest bravado. This is the greatest people that seem to be like they know it all and they have it all. Amen. Come on, say amen if you're with me still. But God says he's looking for people that are not afraid to study, to show themselves approved unto God. That way they can rightly divide the word of God. My God, so that way they can rightly live and discern what's going on in this world. Amen. My God. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, but people want the position, but they do not want the experience. Uh, God began to talk to me about experience and how he works the children of God in their experiences. Uh, my God, he begins to work their experience with their trials and with their tribulations uh, and with their troubles, with their mountain highs and their valley lows. This is how he works their experience by working their patience, by working their faith, uh, by trying their heart, seeing what's inside them, putting them through the fire, seeing if they're going to come out as gold or see if they're still going to come out with some draws and some dolls still on them. But God says, I'm putting you in situations that you might not like uh, only because I'm trying to try your faith. Uh, I'm only trying to try your heart. Uh, I'm trying to see if you're going to come out and still be a witness. Uh, I'm still trying to see if you're going to come out, uh, come on and say, for God I live and for God I die. It doesn't matter if my body's sick. It doesn't matter if I'm going through financial trouble. Come on, it doesn't matter what my past has had. God says I'm going to use these experiences to work out my spirit in you. To make sure that my spirit is in control. Because if you go through this life experience with your carnality, if you go through this life experience with your flesh being weak, you're not going to be able to stand going in a day of judgment. You won't even have the opportunity like a vessel of God, hallelujah, because you will not yield and submit yourself in your experiences to God. So how can I trust and believe that once you get the position that you're going to submit yourself to me because you did not submit yourself in your trials and in your tribulations when they came and they talked about you, when they were stabbing you in your back, you went ahead and cussed them right back out. You went ahead and spread lies all over Twitter. You went ahead and curse them with your mouth. Uh, but God says, uh, I'm looking for the children of God uh, that's not afraid of heartache. Uh, I'm looking for the child of God uh, that's not afraid of disappointment. Uh, God says, I'm looking for the child of God uh, that even though they go through adversity, uh, they're saying, yet will I trust in God. Uh, yet will I look up to the hills uh, from which cometh my help. Uh, my help coming from the Lord uh, who made heaven and earth. Uh, God is looking for the child of God uh, that's not afraid to take his cross. That's not afraid to put his hands to the plow and work in the sun that he all year long and work through the drought and still toil and still work through these plants and these thorns and thistles and pluck them out. So that way he can't produce a fruit in the end. God says, I know that you get tired. I know that you get weary. But God says, trust me, baby. I'm going to change your position. 
it. Uh, I'm going to change it. Uh, it's not going to be the same. Uh, but God said that in a toilet. Uh, I think you worked in this in spirit. Uh, and you done submitted unto me. Uh, and I'm going to test you like I tested Abraham. Uh, to see if you're still going to trust me. Even though I promised you uh, a son. Uh, even though it might seem like you might have to sacrifice that promise. Uh, God is trying you in the experience. Yeah. So that way he can get you to uh, the, the position. He can get me to uh, the position. Uh, that's why we go through these experiences. Uh, if you don't submit in your experience to God, he is not going to trust you. He's not going to elevate you. He's not going to do anything with you. And then go to for you a while you get the position. And then that you think that you want to have. Or that you think you deserve. Uh, my God, God says the palace belongs to mine. God says I'll take it back in song. In the Lord's in the fullness thereof. I don't care what you think is yours. God says the authority that's mine. Come on, God says the chance that's mine. The wealth is mine. Come on, you even be your very food is mine. God says I don't care what you got, but it is mine. You will recognize that this palace, this earth, it all belongs to me, and I reserve the right for it. My Hallelujah. God. Thank you, Jesus. But the experience, the position. People want the position, but they do not want their spirits. Uh, they either do not want to go through anything, uh, my God, uh, but they seek the position. They don't want to go through the sleepless nights. They don't want to go through the trials. So therefore, uh, 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 God cannot give them the position because they will not go through the experience while God tries them. Amen. Uh, they also, this also means in the experience, God says he loses people in the experience part. Thank you, Jesus. Because they do not want to sacrifice. They do not want to sacrifice. They do not want to sacrifice or submit while they're going through their experiences. And that's it. You're going to have to give yourself up. Oh, yeah. Come on, Solomon was a child of promise. He was promised the kingdom, but he still had to sacrifice himself. He couldn't say, I'm an eight year old, I can do it all by myself. I don't need anybody. I got my mama right here. I'm all right here. She's going to help me. So many people want to depend on their mama. They want to depend on their mama. And God said, I'm trying to get you to a position that's better. I'm trying to give you a position where you don't have anybody else but who? Me. And you're only leading on me. You can't trust on your daddy, your mama, your best friend. You can't trust on your colleague. You can't trust, amen, on what you think is right but you're gonna have to totally lean and depend on me thank you jesus Hallelujah. but people now you don't want to submit uh, so that means uh, they don't gauge the experiences uh, in their work this also means they don't have any work ethic mm -hmm. they don't have any commitment My God. because uh, all they want to do is take a shortcut to the position uh. You see, because if you understand, if you want something, you know that you're going to have to be committed to And that's it. You know you're going to have to have yes. a certain work ethic. Yes. Uh, God never said this Christian walk is going to be easy. Mm -hmm. yeah. But he said you're going to have to put in some work. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to put in some time. Uh, but God said you can do it and you will do it. Uh, mm -hmm. Come on, if you trust me, if you be willing and you obey, uh, if you have a per perfect heart before me, uh, come on before God. God says you will have it. You can do it. Uh, but going back to the position, people don't want to put in the work ethic the commitment. They don't want to submit. They don't want to sacrifice, but they show sure enough want the position. You know what they want? They want your position. There's people that want your position. They want your peace of mind. They want your family. That's but you know right. what That's they don't want to do? They don't want to put in the work effort to do it. That's come on, I got to plead the blood of Jesus anytime yes. I see the spirit of the, the enemy trying to come in and wreak havoc. Yes. They don't want to stand up and plead the blood of, oh, that's just a bunch of hobo jobo. Oh, no, 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 no. You see, when you say it's just a bunch of hobo, hobo, it's just a bunch of nothingness. But meanwhile, the enemy's show, straight up telling you, showing you in your face, no, I'm real, so your kid's going to act up. But since you don't believe in it anyway, I'm still going to let your kid act up. Next thing you know, oh, my kid got ADHD. Oh, my kid has defiance disorder. Oh, my kid, he, he, can't, he can't stay focused for anything. Oh, my kid, they need bipolar. Mm -mm. I no, God says it's called foolishness. A rod to discipline. Yes. But chase that thing out. Yes. God yes. says train up a child in the way that he should go. Yes. You see, when you're in the proper position and you gave the right experience, God will let you know. Yeah. Oh, this is the situation for a belt. This is the situation for me to lay hands on my child and pray this little spirit right there right now. Because the beating ain't gonna work, but you know, a couple of us were disciplined. In the name 
name of Jesus. God, help me, Jesus. But people don't want to go through the experience to get all that knowledge. <laughs> Lastly, he said, people, uh, instead of being validated by God, thank you, thank you Jesus. Jesus. They were to validate themselves. Not just that, but they quantify themselves. And they qualify themselves. Just because you got intentions, just because you think you got a heart to do it, God says nobody knows their own heart. I, I know the heart. Every heart is deceitful, desperately wicked. Who can know it? God says, I try it. But you got people, they want position, but they don't want to be validated by God. By getting the knowledge and going through the experience. This is what God said. This is the way that God was talking to me about this. I was like, okay, God. Knowledge, experience, the validation. When it comes to position, there will always be a struggle to attain it because of what you have to go through it. It's not going to be easy, especially if you are a child of God. Now, I'm here just talking to the child of God at this point right here because God, he wanted to point this out to me. He says, I'm not talking about people that are billionaires, millionaires, who have made it out. Uh, but I'm talking about the child of God because I distinctly gave them positions. Yes. And God doesn't care if your position is at the head of a company or if you're the janitor of the company. That's right. You know what God cares about? He cares about your obedience in your position. Because he said the position is mine. God doesn't look at the position and say, oh, this one's better and this one's lesser. No. Look, there's neither Jew, no Greek, nor female, nor male, all right, nor Jew, nor Gentile. Look, God says it's all the same. I've given them all positions. Come on. And you have the, the only thing that you have to do is obey God. And be That's it. Be obedient. Yes. You don't want to be obedient? Then that's where he has the problem with you. Yes, he does. No matter what position you have. Come on. Whether you're running the company down into a hole yes. or whether you just derelicted your duty as a, a servant, as a janitor. Amen. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Thank you, that's Jesus. But as a child of God, you especially, especially if you're a child of pro promise. Solomon was the promised king after David. There was nobody else who was promised king. There was somebody else who tried to come. But guess what? God made sure that that didn't happen. He got the prophet Nathan together. Amen. And I forgot the other in uh, 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 Bathsheba, uh, Solomon's mom. But make sure that that didn't happen because the, the kingdom was already promised to Solomon. Now, not, not, now look at this because Solomon is not the only one who went through this. Where the kingdom uh, uh, was literally not his for a season. The position was not his for a season. But David had to go through that too. His own father. Look at that. You going through some situations in your life right now because you know who's going to go through it next? Who's going to go through it next? Our children. The people who we're going to mentor. There's going to be people who go through it next and they need to know how. And they need to have the knowledge. Yes. Because they might not have the time uh, to get the experience as they go through it. Because it's going to be right there in their face. But it was David, he had to go through it. And then not just that, who else had to go through this? Esau and Jacob had to go through this. Jacob was promised. They came out the room fighting, but Jacob was the one who was promised. My God. Esau and Jacob also struggled over the position over the blessing, but Jacob had to learn even in his experience, this is when experience molds your character and molds your integrity, that he, excuse me, that he did not have to cheat to earn or attain the position in his blessing. This is what Jacob had to learn through his experience. Because before that, he was a trickster. He was gonna lie, still cheat, even from his own family member, to get something that was already promised to him. It makes no sense. Look, God says if it's for you, guess what? It's for you. Yeah. Your brother can't come and move it from you. Your father can't move it from you. Nobody else can remove it from you except for yourself through your disobedience. These were all people of promise, children of God as promise. David, Solomon, and Jacob were all promised a position but still had to go through the experience and gain the knowledge of God so that way they could be validated in their position. Without the experience, there was no validation. David was anointed king and Saul was the king. Jacob was promised before his birth, the older shall serve the younger. And Solomon was promised king at a young age but without the experience, amen, but he was also young and tender. Now let's get back into this young and tender. Solomon's promised king, but he was young and tender. He was either between infancy and adolescence. 
And the Bible also says that he was weak, but he was in a position. What made Solomon so unique? This is what made Solomon so unique. Thank you, Jesus. Solomon had a servant's heart. He knew that he couldn't do it by himself. He was too young. He didn't know. He was intimidated by the work. He was intimidated by the work. Solomon was intimidated by what he had to do. The authority that was just given to him, the crown that he had to wear. Knowing that he would have to judge between people and their issues. See which way the nation should go, make an impact with kings and queens. And then not just that, but also the way of building the temple. A place where everybody was going to come and worship. The instructions from his father. But even though he was young and he was tender, guess what he was? He was willing and he was obedient to complete the task. What, 1 Corinthians chapter 29? David said the work is great. That means there was a lot to go through. There was a lot to do. There was schedules to keep up with. Huh? There was people to, to manage. It was a lot to go through. But Solomon was willing and obedient to do it. Mm -hmm. God gives you a dream. God gives you a business plan. God's showing you things, and he's saying, you know what? I got all this for you to do. Mm. Thank you. I got all this for you. You know you can be intimidated by the work. Mm. That's why some people don't want to go through the experience, because they're intimidated by the work. God, that means I'm going to have to pray for people. God, what if I'm wrong? What if I lay my hands on them and you're telling I, I I miss you? Well, you're in the spirit. Guess what? You ain't going to miss. Come on, God, you mean I'm actually going to have to fast? Oh, my God. No, not this. This, this, this person will get me. God, you mean I'm actually going to have to listen to these people cry and whine over obeying your word? And they get upset with me because it's what you said? Mm. Hearing people's issues? Come on, how many of y'all like to listen to other people's issues and problems? Come on. How many of you like to manage, manage uh, other people? Jesus. Come on. How many of you like the responsibility that comes with it? Is anybody out looking for it? But that's what people look for when they want certain positions. They don't understand. Nevertheless, Solomon, when he knew that he had to manage people, he knew that he had to manage assets, he knew that he had to manage a whole kingdom, Solomon was willing and obedient to the voice of the Lord and to his father. Solomon knew that he needed knowledge because he lacked the experience. Solomon was only eight years old. Tell me where his experience was coming from. His experience was going to come from the knowledge of David that he passed to, to him. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of understanding. This is what you will find littered all through Psalms, Proverbs, and Ecclesiastes. Words that his father has taught him. Amen. But he knew that he lacked the experience. He was not even validated until God granted him the wisdom and the knowledge to judge the people of Israel. Amen. He was not even really validated until God gave him the wisdom. Now let's look at the story in 2 uh, uh, Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Because this is where people start confusing the power in their position of. In verse 9 of chapter uh, uh, 1 of 2 Chronicles, it says, Now, O Lord God, let the promise unto David my father be established, for thou hast made me king over a people at the dust of the earth and the multitude. Give me now wisdom and knowledge that I might go out and come in before the people. For who can judge this thy people that is great? He's saying basically, I can't even do this. And God said unto Solomon, because this, is, this was in thine heart that thou hast not asked for riches, nor wealth, nor honor, nor the life of thy enemies, nor yet has asked for life, but has asked wisdom and knowledge for thyself, thou that thou mayest judge my people over whom I have made thee king. Wisdom and knowledge is granted unto thee, and I will give thee riches. This is God granting him the kingdom and validating him. Because, you see, when people get in a position, you know what they want to ask for? They want dominance. Yeah. 
They want power. They want their authority. They want the, uh, uh, the money. Come on over the people. Over whatever they're trying to get. That's what they want. So they're confusing the power, the, excuse me, the purpose of power. Thank you, Jesus. So check this out. Solomon did not even ask for the death of his enemies. God looks at Christians nowadays, and you know what they want? They want the death of their enemies, mm. right? Come on, they say, you know what? Kill them anyway. He shouldn't have did that. God said, but what about forgiveness? What about repentance? God says, I wish that no man perish, but all men will come into repentance. Why shall he die a, a, a wicked death, uh, uh, O Israel? Repent, right? God doesn't want anybody going, but you got people that are wishing death on people because they have power. They think they have influence. They have a, a, a position. Also with that was the money, the, the wealth. Solomon said, I don't need none of that. What I need, God, is the experience or at least the knowledge and the validation of how to lead your people because of the position that I'm in. When you define the word position, it is a place where someone or something is located or has been put. Solomon was put in a specific place. Jonathan Lloyd had been put in a specific place. It's also a particular way in which someone or something is placed or has arranged. When you think about the things that God has done, he has positioned, he has beautifully arranged things in a certain way for himself. It's also a situation or a set of circumstances, especially one that affects one's own power to act and also a person's uh, particular point of view or their attitude towards something. Yes. As you can see, Solomon, he had a particular attitude towards the situation that he was in. He knew he was young and tender. I'm an adolescent and I'm weak. I don't know what I'm doing. God, I feel like I'm not even uh, 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 treading water. God, I feel like I'm sinking. But God, if you don't help me out, if you don't give me some wisdom, some knowledge on how to deal with these people that are older and more manipulative and they want to abuse me and they want to abuse the crowd and abuse the power of God. God, I need your help. But you look at your position at today. If you ain't crying out to God for help in the position that you're in right now, then something's wrong with you because God says, I'm giving you power. I'm giving you influence to affect the people that is in your, in your uh, area right now. So you need to be calling out on me because guess what? They have issues that they're going through and you've got to be the mouthpiece. That's why I specifically placed you on the job that you're at. The palace is reserved for me. The position is reserved for myself, God says. But Solomon had to ask these questions. He had to ask and go before God for wisdom and knowledge. He didn't want the death of his enemies. He said, God, how am I going to deal with these people? God, I need wisdom and I need knowledge. In your position, you can't do it by yourself, but you need help. Jesus is my help. Come on, everything that I go through, wherever I'm in, on the hill or in the valley, God, you got to be my help. And that was at the point that Solomon was at. Solomon, being young and tender, he needed help, and he sought God for the help. He didn't ask his mother. He didn't ask the priest. He didn't ask the prophets. But he said, God, I need your help. Amen. And here is what power in the position looked like without having the experience or the knowledge of the position. You see, like many other kings, you can be the king and you cannot have a heart for God and you know God will remove you from it. Just look at kings, look at chronicles, go on and look at Samuel. God will remove, remove you from that position. Amen? So this is what happens when you have people that are in a particular uh, uh, position and they have power. They become abusive. Absolute power corrupts absolutes. If you don't got the spirit of God, you're going to misuse the power that you have, the authority that you have. You're going to abuse the people. You're going to abuse the assets. You're going to abuse the kingdom. You're going to abuse what God is trying to get you to be a servant over. Then not just that, but you're also going to be a manipulator. You act like you haven't been on the job before. You ever see coworkers try to manipulate bosses and bosses try to manipulate coworkers. This is what people have and what they do when they feel they have a certain position or a certain uh, 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 authority. Amen. There are people who are in position they do not even know what the power or what's going what the purpose of power is. Thank you, Jesus. In a position, and they are prideful of where they're at. They're also ineffective. Anybody seen an ineffective leader? You can't reach the people. You cannot, you can't even pray, you can't even pray, I don't know, 
somebody in through the Holy Ghost. You can't teach a Bible study. You can't teach or you can't mentor. Come on, but you want a position? You want accolades? Come on, God says, I'm getting, I'm, this is why I'm giving you these experience. You need to use this out here on the people. You need to grab somebody on the job and just pray for them. Let's hold hands and let's just pray. Exactly. Don't worry about what doctrine they have. They're going to see the light. They're going to know They gonna know the authority of God once you begin to open up your mouth and you let God use you. They're going to see. They're going to know that you're the real deal. Amen. But they want this position in their abusive, the manipulative. So many people think the pow that power is to dominate people. Come this on. is the purpose of power. Exactly. And I'm about to be out of here. This Jesus. is what God told me. This is the purpose of power. Right. Yes, you have power like dynamite, Holy Ghost power. But what did God give you that power for? Right. My God. People think that power is to dominate over people. If you ask somebody what the purpose of uh, power is, they're going to want to define what power is. It means to have a certain force uh, over somebody, amen? And this is what the definition of power means. It means the, the ability to do something in an act or a particular way, especially as a faculty or quantity or a capacity or ability direct or to influence behavior of others over the course of events. It also <laughs> means to exert physical strength or force uh, over somebody or over someone. Amen. And this is what power means. Uh, but God is saying this is the purpose of power. Thank you, Jesus. The purpose of power is not for you to force your will on somebody else. God did not force his will on you. Come on, even, even now today, God has not forced his will even upon this earth. The earth, believe me, it knows where the power comes from. It comes from God. Amen. Uh, uh, God did not give us power so that way we could be manipulative. That's not why he gave us the Holy Ghost. Amen. But God gave us power. Amen. He gave us the Holy Ghost. Amen. So that way we might be able to lift our brother. Amen. So God explained to me the purpose of power is to lift your brother. It is to give hope to the hopeless. And to lift the burden of the downtrodden. This is the purpose of power. Mm. Oh it's not God. that you can force your will over somebody yes. else. My God. That's not the purpose of power. We know God, he is all powerful. Yes, he omnipotent. Is. He has all power. Has he made anybody come down to their knees and say, Jesus, you're Lord yet? Mm. Has he? <laughs> but we know that it's coming, correct? Yes, yes. That is coming, Right? Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. Amen. But at this time, God, he is not forcing his will on anybody. God says, come unto me. God's knocking on the door. Come on. If he wanted to enforce his power, he would have did that on the day that he died on the cross. Legions of angels would have came down. And they would have put him off the cross. Come on now. And he would have ascended back up to heaven. My God. But the purpose of power is so that the, those who are oppressed can be lifted. That's true power when you're able to submit. God submitted unto himself. Submitted his own power unto himself. So therefore, we have the right to life. Luke chapter 4, verses 18 through 20. The Jews were having a problem with Jesus at this time because they were looking for the Messiah. They wanted somebody or the Messiah to dominate over the Romans and over the Babylonians. They wanted somebody to pick them up and put them on a pedestal. They wanted somebody to say, Israel, you've been oppressed for so long and now I'm going to put you on this high rock, on this, on this stool and everybody will look at you. But this is what Jesus was speaking and what he was saying in Luke. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Think about this is what your position is for. Because he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. This is the spirit, the anointing. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted. This is what he has sent me for. To preach deliverance to the captives and to recover your sight to the blind. To set at liberty to them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. My God. This is what the spirit of the Lord was on him for. This is what he came down to earth for. This is the power that he wanted to uh, show off and exhibit before all mankind. Not to pick you up and make you rich. Not to pick you up and give you your mansions. Not to pick you up and say, you know what, you are my anointed. Now take the fat ring, take this robe that I have for you. God says, no, I'm giving you power. Come on, to go to those who are oppressed. Yes. Go to those who are brokenhearted. To set them at liberty. That's why I'm giving you power. The reason why people are 
you're bound is because you have an oppressive enemy. So in order to combat the enemy, I've got to give you power, the Holy Ghost, to combat the oppression of the enemy. That the enemy is trying to steal and kill in the people of this world. Come on in your families. This is why I'm giving you the power for us. Not that you can be abusive. Not that people can come and pay their tithes and their offerings and their taxes unto you. Not so people can give you homage or honor. But this is why I have given you power. Isaiah says it like this. Stripping ye the weak hands and conform the feeble knees. Say to them that are a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance and God with the recompense. He will come and he will save you to give hope. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Then shall the lame man leap as a harp and the tongue of the dove shall sing in the wilderness and the water shall break out in the streams in the desert. This is why God has given us the Holy Ghost. This is why God has given us power. Not so that we can dominate over the people, but so that we we can go into those that are oppressed, go to those that are blind, go to those who are feeble, and we can strengthen them, and we can tell them, you know what? God can save you. God will deliver you. There is hope. Trust in the name of the Lord. Trust in the name of God. God will heal you. God will save you. That's why those very words that we speak even today, those words, they affect people, because any time you say God can, that means there is hope. Any time you say God will, that means people who are increased in their faith because they are listening to the words that you're saying. And if you have the power of the Holy Ghost behind you, then you have the power of God that is back in the words that he speaks. God says the words that I speak, they are life and they are spirit. So therefore, the words that you are speaking, preacher, the words that increase the faith, preacher, the words that you are speaking to them to lift them up, hallelujah. God said that they are being fixed with power so their ears begin to tingle, their skin begins to get goosebumps, and they begin to hear about the God that is able to deliver, that is not short-handed, that he cannot save. They begin to understand and cry out to a God, a God that is not deaf or hard-hearing, but they know that he is able to hear, he is able to hear, he is able to hear and deliver them from all of their trials and their tribulations, hallelujah. That's why God says I'm sending you to preach. That's why God says I'm sending you to be a witness. That's why God says I'm sending you to increase their faith. That's why God says I'm sending you to lay your hands on them. That's why God says I'm sending them to you. So that way that you can hear what they're going through. That's why God says I'm sending this man unto you. So that way you can hear his troubles, hallelujah. And that way that you can hear and give him their wisdom and their knowledge that he can get out of his situation. The strength in his hands. To confirm the people needs. Uh, this is why I'm giving you the power of the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. But people want to abuse it. Hallelujah. 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 Second Timothy says it like this: For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. Hallelujah. God says I'm giving you a power to combat, uh, to combat the oppressor, to combat. Uh, come on, come on, to defy uh, the enemy. I'm giving you power, not to have a Lord people, but I'm giving you power to combat those things that are depressing, those things that are oppressing the people. That's what power is for. When you look at how God delivered the children of Israel from out of Egypt, come on, he didn't come up and just straight up put them on a pedestal. He came with power to do what? To deliver them. Not to put them on a stool, but power to deliver them, to separate them. My God, from the oppression that's what God is wants us to understand. This is what you got power for. When you're out in your school and you're in the elementary schools and you're in the middle schools, uh, my God, don't be afraid to talk about God. My God. Uh, my God, Romans says it like this, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of God. For it's the power of salvation. Power. My God, the gospel that we present is power, baby. The death, burial, the resurrection, the repentance is being filled with Holy Ghost. Holiness, that's power, baby. Somebody ain't no devil in hell can touch somebody that's holy. Why? Because he's holy, baby. You can't touch me. You can't put your hands on me. My God, and God encourages you. My God, God, increase as you are, Victor. My God, God 
Jesus is your will. Hallelujah. Get the sight to the blind. Because I'm going to use you to do it. I put the power on you. My God. My God, not that people, oh, they got power of gifts and tongues. Power of prophecy. Lifting them up. Ah. God said, it's to deliver, it's to set people free. It's to combat the enemy. My God, the kingdom of, God, of heaven suffered our bodies, and the body take it by force. But if you're spiritual, you know you ain't, you ain't fighting flesh and blood. What are you fighting? You fight spiritual witnesses, principalities, and high places. That's what you're fighting. It ain't nothing else that you're fighting. My God, but this is what power is. Uh, this is the purpose of power. My God, and God says, this is why the children of God, uh, they got to understand the position that they're in and the power that they possess. And the purpose of their power is not for you to be lifted up. Oh, look at me. I'm saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. I teach, I preach. Now you put that gift to work, baby. You come back to the enemy. Come on, you, you go find somebody who is down and out and you speak to them and you speak a rainbow word to them because God is inside of you. God says, look, I will, you, God says, open up your mouth and I will fill it. Psalms 89, open up your mouth, I'll fill it. You don't have to worry about what you're going to say. God told the disciples, don't worry about what you're going to say. Don't worry about food or drink or anything else. God says, I'm going to tell you explicitly what to say. Look at the day of Pentecost when, when the Holy Ghost fell. They began to speak as who gave the utterance? As the Holy Ghost began to give them the utterance. Explicitly speaking, prophesying, praising. Amen. This is the power that you possess. Amen. As you're standing to your feet. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. If you could get some, uh, 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 some music, Sister Felicia. But your position is the purpose of your power. Like I said earlier, some of us need to be excited because we're not in the same position anymore. I'm not in the same mindset anymore. Depression, who are you? Come on, y'all need to talk to your enemies sometimes. Spirit of fear, who are you? Spirit of death, who are, who, who are you? What's your name again? What power do you have? Who sent you? I don't recognize you. I don't, I, I, no, I don't recognize you. My God, so many people, they get scared out of their positions of who they are in God. Man, I don't care. I was talking with my sister earlier on the right here. I don't care if I'm a janitor. It's peaceful. I talked to her and she, she said it's peaceful, basically. On the job, it's peaceful for her. God don't care what you're doing. Are you going to be obedient to me? I'll be a janitor just mopping the floors by myself. Praise to God. Security watching me on the on their cameras. Man, what's he doing? He jumping around? He preaching to himself? With the mop guys? Come on, preach myself happy. I do it in my own house. I got to get my own mindset and just preach my own self happy. Working the gift that's inside of me. That's the same thing we got to do. God has given you a purpose for the power that you have. My God, he has given it to you. Don't be afraid of the dreams that you got. God says, don't worry, I'm going to give you the knowledge and the experience. So that way when you're validated, you open up that business, you don't have to worry about, oh, I was qualified and validated by the business school of Harvard. Amen. You can say, no, I paid my tithes. I pay my responsibilities, my respects on the God, and uh, that's that's all I know. All I know is the obedience of God. I don't know anything else. You know, I don't know astrology. I don't know science, a whole lot of scientific methods, but I do know, and I got a doctorate in the fear of the Lord. Hallelujah! I got that. I got a master's degree in the wisdom of God, the fear of God. You know what? Uh, I'm getting a bachelor's right now to understand it. That's what I got. Hey, Amen. Thank you, Jesus. These altars are open. I don't know what you have need of. I don't know what you have need, but God knows what you have need of. You need help understanding your position where you at right now in life. God says, "Hold on. I got you." God says, "I got you." 
I ain't gonna leave you in the same room. I know you got dreams. I know you got visions, but God, Alex, he knows you got dreams. He knows you got visions. I know you wanted to get up and jump and dance around because God is hitting you. God is challenging you. God's increasing your faith, young man. He's trying your heart. And I know you're like Peter, God. You know my heart already. God, you asked me if I loved you. God, you know I love you. But God says, I still got to try you. 